My name is Coach Robinson. I am the head coach at OCS, Oklahoma Christian School, and I am so excited to share with you a little bit of my journey of how leadership has impacted my life on a daily basis. Thank you for tuning in to Defining Moments Podcast. This episode is brought to you by CMM Financial Services. At CMM, we know how hard it is to find someone who knows and cares enough to create the tax and wealth plan that you deserve. After walking alongside hundreds of clients for the past 20 years with accounting, bookkeeping, tax strategy, and financial planning, we have created a proven system to help you reach your financial goals. CMM has your complete financial team to reach your financial goals. Book a call at cmmfinancialservices.com. Welcome back to the Undefeated Show, Defining Moments podcast. We are located in Kyle Golding's brand new podcast studio at the Better Business Bureau located in downtown Oklahoma City. 2023 is going to be awesome because it's the year of leadership and we have one of our favorite all-time friends on the show, the men's wrestling coach at Oklahoma Christian Schools, Coach Colby Robinson. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited about talking about these topics and and just kind of really getting into what it means to be a true true leader in yeah. all facets of the game. I love it. So. And you're a man of awesome faith. So let's kick this podcast off with a prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll go ahead and start it if you don't mind. Absolutely. Please. All right. Tell me, Father, Lord, uh, we, just, uh, we just come here and we just pray over this time that we have to spend here, God. And we just pray that your will will be done in everything that is said. And God, we just pray that you will just be our leader and our guider and our director in every aspect of our lives. God, you're an amazing God, and we love you so much. In your name, amen. Yeah, I appreciate that. Got something for you real quick? All right. There we go. Happy New Year, brother. There we go. With the whole <laughs> undefeated theme and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Hopefully the t-shirt sit, uh, size works and oh, all yeah. that good of stuff. So I mean, Awesome. Well, thank you so much. You're a pretty fit guy, so I'm sure it's going to look good on you. <laughs> there we go. There we yeah. go. Do you remember how we first met? Yeah, I remember. It was kind of a crazy situation. We were uh, I was on my way to, to Utah yeah. to, to watch a couple of my athletes wrestle, and and uh, I was sitting there. I had my headphones on, and I was in the zone getting on the airplane, and I looked, turned around, and I was like, whoa, there's, <laughs> there's uh, Wong. And I was like, man, I was super excited to see you and, and super excited to kind of kind of walk through that journey together and it was like it was a cool thing to see that so yeah i i remember that moment too i was like i got really excited and then my wife and i got on the plane she's like who is that i was like that's my friend coach robinson <laughs> she's like who and i was like holy and she's off of twitter and she's like oh okay okay yeah yeah i've heard you mention him a few times like yeah so I thought that was a it was a cool moment for me yeah, to for actually sure. be able to shake your hand. You're going to Salt Lake City, right? Yeah, I was going to Salt Lake City, Utah. I was going out there. I get the privilege sometimes to be able to to go and coach my athletes outside of the state of Oklahoma. Yeah, and so um, a parent he kind of funded my way out there, and so uh, I was able to go out there to Utah to to go out there and uh, and coach my athletes. And yeah. So I was really excited about going on that trip. So I was I was pumped to meet you as well. Uh, it was funny. I kind of talked to my wife about you too, and and I'm like the defining moments guy, <laughs> and uh, and she's like she's like I'm not even on Twitter, so I don't even know. So, but you know that's the cool thing about you know Twitter and the platform there is that yeah. you be able to connect with people that you maybe not have interaction with on a daily basis sure. and get insight on people's journeys and lives and yeah. and just kind of that's that's what I really enjoy about it for sure. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, you know the journey. You know, the defining moments. Let's hear some of your defining moments. Let's hop into it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, the first thing that, you know, is kind of kind of a big thing in my life um, is is my family. That's that's my my number one. That's my number one defining moments. You know, uh, God blessed me in uh, in June of 2008 to be married to an awesome woman, um, Emily Robinson, that has just been my backbone. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think about, you know, in our faith and our leadership, that's really, really our focal point of where we learn how to lead, right? right? We make a lot of mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes in my marriage, you know, um, good ones and bad ones, yeah. right? <laughs> so I believe you can make good mistakes, right? right? As long as you're learning from them for sure. Um, and so, um, you know, one of the things that I always said, 
um, to my athletes as well as as to people that I mentor is to to grow in leadership in a family is backed by an awesome woman that's that's mm. backing you, that's supporting you, that's loving you through that journey and believing in your dreams like you believe in your your own dreams and. Yeah. Um, that's that's one thing that Emily has just been such a, a huge aspect in the way that I've learned and the way that I've developed as a man. And when I was struggling, she was praying for me. Uh, the same thing with my mother, you know, my mother's the same way. She's That's what I think when you're looking for the girl of your dreams, you look for somebody that's somewhat like your mother, yeah. right? And so <laughs> um, my my mother, she was a prayer warrior. She she was on her knees for me when I was going through tough times. And, and my wife's that same person, you mm-hmm. know? And so I've been able to do that, uh, you know, be in that relationship for oh, going on 15 years. She's always like, let's do something fun for 15 years. I'm like, oh, well, let's, let's, let's see, let's see, you know? But we're going to do something fun. We'll, yeah. we'll figure out something. Yeah. Um, and so I, I got four awesome kids. Uh, my daughter, she's my my beaming light. Uh, I I think uh, God really um, was like, you're gonna have a daughter because I grew up with four boys. So uh, <laughs> and and my dad is a very alpha male type guy, and and so and my mom, she was always just trying to manage all us boys, right? And then our, our first grandchild that they had was a girl, and then my dad was like. I don't know how to do this yet, you know? And so, um, it was, it was cool. You know, McKaylee is just a, such a sweet little girl. She sings, she dances, she does all these fun things. Uh, and I'm, and I, and I'm so blessed to have McKaylee in my life. And, uh, then my oldest son is a uh, Cademan and Cademan is named after a cool band that we used to love to listen to me and my wife is Cademan's call. It's a, it's a, an Irish warrior, Okay. Name a battle, um, and so Cademan's a little free spirit. He he's got big imagination. Mm-hmm. Um, he likes him some Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. Uh, he's he's a goer. And then uh, God blessed us um, last year with uh, with two awesome twins. Wow. Um, and uh, and so that was kind of a journey in itself. They were in the NICU for fifty seven days. Um, and, uh, so we have Caleb and we have Colton, um, Caleb is, is, uh, they, the doctor said, we don't have to fight who's the oldest cause they were born in the same minute. He pulled them out in the same minute. It was craziest thing. Wow. So, so anyways, but Caleb, uh, he's, he's my tough, tough boy. He's, uh, he's, he's a go-getter also, but he's also a little bit of my mama's boy already. Gotcha. I can see it, but. Um, Colton's my little battler, man. Uh, Colton got his name after, uh, one of my wrestling coaches, uh, son that passed away. And, uh, I remember having that conversation with my wrestling coach and I told him, I said, I was going to name my son after his son. And, uh, in that moment that we knew Colton was going to be something special and Mm -hmm. Colton battled his whole life so far, he's been through surgeries and so on and so forth, but he's such a precious boy and. I looked at him just the other night, and I was just so thankful that I have him in my life. He's he's taught me so much more than he'll ever know. Yeah. Um. So Colton technically is my youngest, um, but uh, Colton is he's he's one of my pride and joys. So, you know, I got a great family. God has blessed me with some amazing things, and uh, and so that's where I find my first piece of leadership. That's my mm-hmm. my defining moment right there. It's like, you know, God says in Scripture that um that we have to love. Uh, our wives like Christ loved the church and and I've been really good at that sometimes and I've really struggled at that sometimes you yeah. know and and if you think about that and the way I perceive that 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 command is that you know Christ died for the church mm. right and so you got to be willing to do whatever it takes to keep your family together even when it gets tough and uh and I thought I was getting married and it was going to be it was gonna be awesome, right? <laughs> and uh, and I had all these expectations and all these things, and uh, it it kind of flipped me on my head a little mm-hmm. bit, and uh, and and so, um, but you know, I call my wife my battle buddy because we we're just we battle together and we pray together and we lift each other up, and um, she's my backbone. She's mm-hmm. never really in the limelight. She's always she's always back there. Uh, praying for me and and let me live out my dreams and uh and so i i really enjoy her and love her so much and so man that's my family that's 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 the key to 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 where my foundation of Mm -hmm. leadership is. yeah 
you were, you mentioned Colton, and it rings a bell to me because if I'm incorrect, let me know. But I, is it Coach Schneider? Yes, that you Coach were Schneider. To? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So Coach Schneider uh, had uh, has a son, and his name is is Colton, and and Colton passed away his freshman year, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, it just. I know. I think he might be coming on the show, maybe possibly mm-hmm. in in the future. And and he is uh, Coach Snyder has been such an impact on my life. And uh, you know, he was my junior high wrestling coach, and uh, and I got to see his boys raise up. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I love uh, Leighton, his other son, and <laughs> and Colton. And and I just remember, you know, one time I was wrestling. I remember this is a huge huge reason why Colton has such an impact on me. One time I was wrestling and Colton was in the corner and uh, he was sitting there watching me wrestle and I could just tell that there was something special about that young man and um, and then when I heard that he had lost his life it was uh, it was pretty traumatic mm-hmm. on the program and pretty traumatic on people that knew him because Colton was he was it was a driving point of Coach Snyder you know he's he was a piece of Coach Snyder and and uh, that day he he lost a piece of himself and I can't even imagine being able to you know go through that journey together but coach Snyder I mean his I I was I posted on Twitter the other day um that Inky Johnson this this thing I love Inky Johnson mm-hmm. you want to learn about leadership you you listen to that yeah. dude that dude uh just beams uh just this personal just belief in yourself and belief in leadership and uh he says through adversity you learn to persevere and you learn the process right and mm-hmm. so this process of adversity it can either make you a better person or it can make you a, t- a not so good person, yeah. right? And so this process of being seeing adversity, he says that it makes you into a monster. Mm. And I think about that, and I'm like, man, through all these adversity times, these this as as I've been growing as a young man and developing as a dad and developing as a coach and all this kind of stuff, you know, I look at these things and I'm like, I'm like, this is all process, mm-hmm. right? And it's a process of God creating me into who He wants me to be, not in who I want to be. Yeah. And uh, and so that was uh, that you know, Coach Snyder has 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 seen that and he's grown in that. And, and I just I love just sitting back and watching him. Yeah. And serving with him, I've gotten the privilege to coach underneath him, wrestle for him, and all that kind of stuff. And gosh, he is a he's an a, a model, a role model citizen in yeah. my life, and uh, and I talk to him, you know, weekly, yeah. um, and and just share ideas. Coach, how do you coach this kid? How do you coach this kind of kid? Mm-hmm. You know, and and he just he's that guy for me. That's great. Um, so yeah. What about yourself and adversity through your life? You were talking about you went through some times in your life that were really down. Yeah, you know, um, when I got when I got done, I I wrestled in college. I wrestled at the University of Central Oklahoma. Was an All American there and. Um and and wrestled there and three year starter and God blessed me with that opportunity to be able to go to Central Oklahoma. Well, I, I got done with with training, and any athlete he gets done with training, it's like you take this like huge huge hole out of them, right? Because I I would wake up in the morning, and I was never never the guy that was blessed with all this talent. Mm-hmm. I was just, I had to work hard. Um. And I remember I used to hear stories of people that were like that, and I was like, "Whoa, yeah, you, you know." <laughs> but like, I had to work hard. I had to work. I had to get up at six o'clock in the morning. I had to get practices in yeah. while people were sleeping, all that kind of stuff. And so when I got done training, uh, I was like, "Well, I got to find something to fill that hole, right? That hole in my heart." And uh, so I got into the ministry and uh, went to down to southeastern Oklahoma, and God blessed me with this awesome church. And um, I was there for about eighteen months, and some things happened. I got let go from there, and then I was empty again. And we had just, you know, had our had our daughter, and she was roughly about six months old. And so I started to cling to the next next thing that I could. Um, and I didn't really have any kind of vision and didn't know what was going on. I was kind of, I was living a dream of my kind of my dad a little bit, and going into the ministry and doing these things. And so I was given this opportunity to go to. Um, go to St. Louis and get my master's in theology. And I, w- I went there and I was coaching at the college level. And I was like, man, this is my dream job, right? And I coaching at the college level. And I was, I was, I was whining and dining with all the college coaches. And these coaches, 
like when they got together outside of wrestling, it was like they, like any athlete, like we went hard on the map, but we also went hard outside of the <laughs> wrestling <laughs> room, if you know what I mean. And so I was starting to get this idea that if I wanted to be successful, I needed to do, I needed to go and partake in that behavior, right? Mm. And so, you know, alcohol became kind of a, an avenue to me, an escape um, from the things that my, my central reality um and they became pretty progressive in my life and uh and i got to a point where um i had left oklahoma i had left uh, missouri baptist university and taken a head coaching job because i thought that was the next big thing right i needed to be a head coach and i was young right i was 20 24 years old 23 years old and recently married with a young daughter like and, and i had all these things going on right and then on top of that I had this substance that was pulling me away from doing the things that I really wanted to do. But that substance allowed me to feel involved and mm-hmm. allowed me to be feel like I was being successful. I was doing the things. I took over this program. I started building this program in the first couple of years. Oh, my gosh. It was rough. I mean, like, I remember one time we had a duel and we lost 72 to zero. Like, that's like the worst <laughs> you get. Yeah, it was rough, you know. Had all these first-year wrestlers. We were wrestling basically six-day schools. and it was it was pretty difficult, right? And so, needless to say, I I spent a lot of time, you know, at the local bar down there, and I was just like, well, I, I just I can't get these kids to do what I want. My expectation was super high, and and so I started to involve this substance, and mm. and I did what any other addict does, right? I did I ran, right? I ran. And things started to get to to be kind of too good to be true, and and so I ran to the next big job, and I took this head coaching mm. job here at a university in Oklahoma in Oklahoma. And so took this job. I get this job. I'm super pumped. I'm the head coach of a college program. Right. I'm getting, I'm like, and and I get to talk about Jesus with these kids because it was a, it was a Christian university and they were a build up program. And I said, you know, you could be the first, you could be the first. That was my motto, right? You could be the first. Well, I definitely was the first. I had that job for about four months and then, a video kind of surfaced of me taking some alcohol and, mm. and the, the university didn't like that. And so they let me go. And it was, it was a very tough, tough time. That was in 2018. Right. And so, oh, yeah, it was, sent- yeah, it wasn't, wow. it wasn't, for, you know, uh, that long ago. And, and so I, w- I went through that journey. Um, but that was a process like got, we we're all in process. We're all in process of, of, of God restoring us into the people that he wants us to be, not who we want to be. Because when I'm the captain of my own ship, I tell my kids this all the time, my athletes, I call my athletes my kids as well, yeah. right? So when, I, uh, I'm, I'm, when I'm the captain of my ship, my ship sinks. But when God's the captain of my ship, he goes, he goes pretty far, mm-hmm. right? And, and I'm able to do some things that I, I never thought I was able to do. Well, needless to say, uh, Rubber kind of hit the road. That was that was in December and March. Uh, I'm in Northfolk, Virginia, training with some kids, and um, and my wife calls me, and and it was it was a rough day. It was is what I call my D day, um, and everything kind of came out right that I had been drinking all the time and doing some other stuff, and it just wasn't healthy um, in our relationship. And I remember sitting at on this cold um, tile floor in Norfolk, Virginia airport. I was sitting there and I was trying to cry and I couldn't cry because everything in my life had been such a delusion mm. that I've been trying to tell everybody that I'm going to be this successful head coach and, and I was going to be this, this prestige husband and I was going to be this, this awesome dad and I was going to be this great thing. But deep down inside, I was dying inside. And, uh, and I was hurting and I was, I was, I was full of pain because it just, it was eating me up. Right. And I remember I'd, I'd go to church and I'd try to raise my hands. I would try to pray. I was like, man, does God even exist? Right. Mm-hmm. I really went through a whole time of, of the existence of God. And so I'm on this cold tile floor and I'm trying to feel, trying to cry. And, uh, and I, and I, sp- I spent about 24 hours. And I remember I had this conversation with God. I was like, God, do you even exist? Do you even, are you even real? And, uh, and I sm- felt this small voice of God just kind of saying, hey, you need to go talk to your dad. And I was like, 
and it was like two o'clock in the morning. I was like, I'm not going to talk to my dad. That's the last person I want to talk. To. And, uh, and then, uh, so I, I, I go through that process of that God kind of speaking to me. Well, the next morning I woke up and my dad sends me this text message and he says, Hey, at two o'clock in the morning, God woke me up. And he said, this Bible verse of these Israelites that were struggling to get to the promised land and they had to go through all these battles to get to where God wanted them to get to. And they were doubting the existence of God. Hmm. And for the first time in probably eight and a half years, I just started bawling. And because that's all I needed to prove that God was real in my life. Hmm. And so, you know, another huge defining moment in my life was that moment, right? Yeah. Because that's where the rubber hits the road. And I've... I do what any, like, like I told you, like, I was never the most talented individual, so I had to train hard. And so if I wanted to stay sober, I had to do what other people weren't doing, right? So I found these meetings to go to, and I found these these resources to go to, and, and really tried to get into it, and really tried to figure out what was going on inside me, um, because I was I was losing myself, and uh, and God just kind of flipped my life completely upside down. And said, now I'm going to start you all over. I'm going to fill you up. And uh, he's been doing little things to fill my cup. Um, yeah. Because it's a heavenly cup now. It's not, it's not an earthly cup. It's not a cup that I've developed and I've made. Um, I don't have to hide behind uh, a mirror or hide behind a wall and act like I'm goody two shoes on the outside, but in the inside, I'm dying inside. So, you know, that was a huge thing. And, and, and get back to the the key of leadership like i think like even in leadership positions man we can get to a point where we feel like we have to do everything right all the mm. time and sometimes it's okay for us to fail mm -hmm. and sometimes it's okay i i tell my athletes this all the time if i screw up i will apologize like that's a huge thing that's a huge thing something that my sobriety has taught me a lot of honesty willingness and um Honesty, willingness, and openness. Mm -hmm. Like those three things, like if I can do that every single day, then I'm going to be a better person and I'm going to be a better uh, vessel for God to use me. Mm -hmm. Because I prayed my entire life, God, I just want your will for me in my life. I prayed for that all my life. And even when, before I walked in here, I was like, I was like, God, I just want your will to be done. Right? Just your will to be done. Don't let, let me hide behind, behind you. Right? Yeah. So uh, I just want to be part of what God's doing. Mm -hmm. Right. And so um, that's what I always wanted. And through sobriety has allowed me to be who God wants me to be. Yeah. I remember I used to sit and be like, man, I don't have a story. You know, I don't have a story. I just this Southern Baptist boy that just <laughs> went to church and you know, every time the door was open, whatever. But God has kind of created a story in my life. And, yeah. and it's been able to help a lot of people. Right. I do. Yeah. I help a lot of people outside of just coaching aspect now. I'm able to be used by God in, in some crazy ways. Yeah. For sure. How did you break the addiction of alcohol? Well, I think, you know, the first thing is that um, you got to understand and you have to, and man, I'm a, I'm a wrestler by trade, man. I just, I hate to feel defeat. I hate to feel um, submission, any kind of like when I don't even like to be in, in a tornado shelter. Because I feel like I can't even like <laughs> breathe in there. Because I'm just like I'm. I feel like I'm in the, confined in the spot, you know. And uh, and so uh, I don't like to feel defeated. Yeah. Um. And uh. And but I tell my athletes this all. We we re, we read a book, right? We're reading a book this year. It's called Chop Wood, Carry Water. Mm. It's just been such a such an awesome book that. And I'll talk more about it here in a little bit. But it talks about falling in love with the process, right? And uh. And through this book. Um, it, it talks about how we see the process as developing instead of as being defeated all the time. So how am I, and I don't tell my kids they lose anymore. I don't tell them they lose. You either win or you learn. Mm. Those are your two ways of, 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 and that book preaches that, right? You either win or you learn. So how are you learning from an adverse situation? Well, through sobriety, um, it allowed me to learn, learn a lot about me, learned a lot about my relationship with my wife, learned a lot about my relationship with my peers. Um, it, I learned so much through that. And I believe that God put that in my life so I could rely on him more. Mm. 
because for some reason in my life, for, for some, what other reason other than I don't even know, but I wasn't relying on God. I was trying to do it my own way. Yeah, and it, so it's that that unmanageability. It's that that submission to myself every single day to allow God to be using me. Um, you know, to break that cycle, it didn't just take me. It took my higher power, in which I call God, and it took uh, it took a lot of people that surrounded me and loved on me, um, because there were some pretty lonely days in there, yeah. right? And yeah. so it's not it's not all rainbows and butterflies, like like some of those TV commercials, <laughs> like you get to go to the Maui and do all this kind of stuff. <laughs> like it was some tough stuff, and I had to I had to really look back at like you know. <laughs> You know, when I was seven years old, what were those, those things that were mm. that were that affected me, and uh, and so, uh, but it that's how I broke it mm. because God wanted me, mm. God wanted me to break that addiction, and if He still wants me to struggle every single day through these journeys, and just allows me to rely on Him and know that it's not my will but His be, will be done, you yeah. know, um, and so. Uh, that's that's a huge, huge, huge defining moment for sure in my yeah. life, you know. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's several huge defining moments, and listening to you speak about uh, chopping wood and carrying water mm-hmm. and, and the process, et cetera. What's your process like as far as your daily day to day? How do you prep for your mornings? How do you prep to be a father? How do you prep to be a wrestling coach? How do you prep to be a teacher? Mm-hmm. And with society, well, I yeah, I think you know. It, it is uh it is definitely a grind you know what i mean <laughs> um but i think it's it's important of like where do we set our standard mm. like what do i set my standard as if my standard for myself is up here then i need to do everything i do de- do in that day to de- abiding by that standard so every morning i wake up I have a cup of coffee and i spend some time in, in morning meditation every morning on my couch you know whether it's reading my bible whether it's just spending time just silent because I need silence in my life too. Once I hit the door, door, it's like there's chaos coming from everywhere, whether it's a parent talking to me about, you know, when practices or like whatever it is. Yeah. But I have to spend that time uh, for sure in the morning of about 30 minutes every morning I spend just sitting on the couch and just sitting in silence mm. and, uh, and spending some time with, with God and getting myself centered. And then I go from there, and I and I I go to work. But one of the things that I've started doing, uh, probably the last two years, is I just turn everything off. Mm. Just turn everything off as I'm going to work. I just turn everything off, and I get into my thoughts and my process. I I I get to work. I'm always the first person to our work. I I believe that being a, a good leader is a person that's always the, the mm-hmm. always the first there, always the last to leave, mm. and um and so. I I get there about six o'clock. I lesson plan. I get myself right for the day. I listen to a little bit of praise and worship music, and I start getting myself physically ready for the day. Yeah. Right. And then once once those kids run in the door, I have to give it a hundred percent. Yeah. Right? Uh, I coach. I I teach uh, sixth grade kids about the Lord, and I would have never thought in my wildest dream that I would be able to be a wrestling coach, be a dad. And be able to teach about God every single day. Wow! So I get the process to be able to teach about Jesus's life. I teach about Jesus's life from his birth all the way to his death. Yeah. And it's a and it's a beautiful thing. So once the, I'm teaching about such an important thing, that it takes me a hundred percent on that. You know, like I've got to give it a hundred percent because these kids, if I don't give them truth a hundred percent, then uh, they're gonna get outside truth. Yeah. Right. And in a in a social media world that we live in, pulling kids away from um, what the truth of the gospel is, um, I can't I can't come in every single day mm-hmm. um, with not a good spiritual development, yeah. right? And so the spiritual formation of of young people today, you know, I hate it when people are like, "Man, this is a generation we're raising." Like this is this is so sad. It's like, well, why don't we do something about it? Sure. Why don't we invest in that, right? And yeah. these kids understand every single day. It's like, what is truth? I ask them that all the time. What is truth? What is truth? Is truth defined by this world, behind, uh, defined by hiding behind a screen, yeah. or is it found in what the scripture says, right? And so 
um, that that's kind of a, a huge thing for me. So you know, I I I love I love what I do, and then I kind of go into to I I dabble in my junior high practice as well as my high school practice, right? So um, I'm involved in all aspects of my program. Uh, I believe that a leader needs to be accessible mm. and has to be visible. Mm. Um, it's not somebody that just does the barking orders and then hides behind you know right um i I need to be out there i need there's a there's a concept that i that i produce every single day um in my athletes and so i'm i'm out there in front of it um and so you know that's that's a huge thing for me is just being a, being around my kids and being around them and so and loving on them um that relational piece of leadership is huge right mm-hmm. if i don't have a relationship with my athletes or my family I don't have a relationship with my wife. Like, if I don't have those things, how are they going to be able to be led by me? Right. I think uh, as a culture, uh, the culture teaches us that that we lead in front of people, and then that hopefully they catch up. And that's that to me is not leadership. Yeah. That to me is not leadership. And and so I'm a re- relational coach. One of my favorite coaches, <laughs> I because I just I dig coaching, and I and I dig how other people do it. And so I look at other successful coaches, and and I think about Dabo Sweeney. Mm. You know, it's like that one. That is one person on my bucket list I want to meet. Yeah. Like that is like such a huge dude because that dude, because the reason why he's so successful is because he knows who he is. Mm. He knows who he is, and I think um, we see leaders all around our world today that they have to understand who their foundation is what their foundation is whether it's faith whether it's whether it's their family they know what their foundation is people are going to be that's contagious right yeah, sure. and so Dabo Sweeney man he just he is, is so excited and passionate he loves yeah. his kids he's always the first person like I I just I would love to be a fly on the wall in his coaches meetings like <laughs> how are you leading man um, because I just, I would, I would love to meet that dude. I met, I had the privilege to meet Tony Dungy and that was wow. such an awesome experience. Yeah. I've read a few of his books and just seen how he leads. Right. And so I try to emulate that. Right. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't ri- try to recreate the will. Right. Right. This isn't coach Robinson's way of how to lead. Right. But yeah. it's just, it's just, I, I take what other people do and yeah. I didn't make it better. Right. And so, um, you know, that's one of the things that is so funny. I was, I was watching this deal on OU football and stuff like that. I said, I told my wife, I'm like, hey, can you believe that, you know, they had their press conference and they're all wearing the same shirt. They're all they're all doing the same things. I was like, man, that's such a, but that's the program, right? Yeah, and so right. if if you come into my program and you come in to, to watch my kids, I hope, you emu- I hope they emulate a little piece of me, mm. right? That's what I hope for, right? And so influencing this next generation is such a big thing for me. Yeah. Um. And so I'm. I'm a. It is so such a passion of my life, man. I get so fired up about this next <laughs> generation of kids and just seeing them develop because they're unique. Yeah. You know they're unique and they're and they're different, right? And and uh, and I was having this conversation the other day. My wife was like, "Hey, have you ever thought about like quitting as like a as a kid, like quitting a sport or something like that?" And I was like, "Well, I think you know this generation." is a little bit different because they get so many outside issues that pull them away from mm. competing in sports that it's like, man, it'd be easier for me to be at home watching TV. It'd be easier for me to be on my phone watching Netflix. Well, so <laughs> yeah, so all these outside issues are going to make me want to quit, right? right? And so, um, but so my job as a coach is not to see those and go, man, those things are bad. And now, although I do kind of a little bit, yeah. right? Um, but uh, my job as a coach is to be able to navigate that, right? And yeah. navigate that as for my athletes. And so, you know, those those are those are things that I get super passionate about. But anyways, all that back to my day, you know, um, at the end of the day, um, and a lot of the time during, in the mornings, I also go to to a meeting or, or something to get myself finance, uh, just just mo- emotionally right. Yeah. Um, and so um, I do those things, and then uh, I end the day spending time at home with my with my family, right? Yeah. Um, I I try my best to unplug and hang out, right, and just yeah, turn off sure. my phone and and just hang out with my family. I don't do the best job at it. God, it's really convicted me of that. But you know, just being when when I'm home, 
being dad. Mm. I don't have to be coach. I don't have to be <laughs> like any of that. I get to be dad. Yeah. Right. And I know my wife is at home and is stressful with our twins and got to take kids every single way. And I think us as men, we walk home, we come at home and it's like, we want to, we want to just, just kind of yeah. tr- stress relief. But when we walk into our house, that's our most important playground. Yeah. Like investing in our kids, investing in, um, these things that, um, that are going to invest into the kingdom, right? Yeah, these yeah. these these people that God has entrusted in us to shepherd well, and if we choose those moments, like oh man, I'm gonna get home. I'm just gonna chill out. I'm gonna have you know a cup of iced tea. I'm just gonna chill on the couch, right? Um, I can't do that as a dad, yeah, because my wife needs to see me being a servant in the household too. Um, true leadership comes with servanthood. I like it, right? And so. You know, I, I think about that, you know, that time where Jesus washed the disciples' feet. He says, I'm I'm here to serve you. And and that's what I have to do as a dad. And if that's cleaning the dishes in the in the in the sink, if that's un, you know, doing a dirty diaper, like it's like those are the things I have to do because when I plug in at home I've gotta be a dad. Yeah. Right. So yeah. yeah. So when you think about your coaching mindset leadership you got to answer questions to yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Ownership and things like that. What are maybe a couple of questions that you wish people would ask you, but no one ever asked Coach Robinson? Mm. That's a good question. You know, um, leadership is such a such a, a prestige position, right? And when people get to leadership positions, it's pretty lonely up there. Mm. You know, I was... <laughs> We've been watching Yellowstone, right? I don't know how much you can learn from Yellowstone, but I've been watching Yellowstone. And uh, again, my mindset is how what what can I get out of this, right? right yeah. And so I'm looking at uh, John Dutton, and I'm like, man, he's finally the governor. Sorry if that's a spoiler alert, but anyways, <laughs> he's finally the governor, right? And he's at this prestige position, and he's lonely, and it's it's lonely at the top. Mm. But one of the things was that I never got taught is expectations, whether they're the same again uh, with a team that is is ranked five in the country or if it's you know with a newcomer kids, it's like expectations can stay the same. It's just gonna take a little bit longer to get there. Mm. And so for me, like I I got put into so I've been in the last probably two years I've been put into a lot of leadership positions and I've realized how lonely it is up here, mm-hmm. and uh, but I also understand what God has entrusted in me in, and I take them very seriously yeah. because it's very I can know you know it's crazy um, the, our society ta- teaches um, to just get behind a screen mm-hmm. and bash leadership and it is so easy for us to do that right and we can get wrapped up into that and and it's like we get wrapped up into that and then we find ourselves and we've allowed deceit into our lives Mm. and now i'm on the other side of it and i'm (laughs) might be a little bit of that dude right and it's like you know um every choice and every decision i make as a leader in my program and whatever I'm doing in my life, in my just in my my relationship with my wife, like every decision and choice comes with prayer, comes with how is this going to affect the team, mm-hmm. like the team as a whole. Um, I read this book called Five Dysfunctions of a Team, and it said stop talking about your people as an individual, start talking about them as a team. Mm-hmm. Like if we want to develop, we got to develop as a team. Right, and we're only as strong as our weakest link. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, uh, you've heard that probably before, and you know, I think about that. It's like, as a as a leader, I've got to I've got to work on the whole, not just yeah. me, not just one part of it, sure. not just my junior high program, not just my youth program. Dude, I've I started a program at OCS uh, four years ago, and uh, we had three kids on the team today. Right now, we have 85 kids involved in our program. Oh, man. From youth all the way to high school. That's amazing. And that, yeah, that doesn't wow. just come by, you know, focused on one aspect of it, you know. I have to understand if if my team wants to be 
at the end of the year a very successful team. And that's another thing I don't ever talk about is winning a state title. Like my kids don't ever hear me say that. <laughs> if you if you want it, you gotta go get it, mm-hmm. right? If you want it, you gotta go get it. So you know it's one of those things like like if they want to be at the top of the podium at the end of the year, then they're gonna have to do the things that's gonna fall in love with that right yeah. so that's 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 what it talks about in that book chopwood and carry water has radically changed our entire team yeah. we walk around at tournaments with a with a with an axe because <laughs> i want our kids to understand it's a wooden axe yeah, but yeah, we yeah. want our kids to understand that this is a process we're in love with the process yeah and when the process sees the results whoo is special right? man right? it is so special because that's that monster Right, yeah. that's the monster that Inky Johnson was talking about. Mm-hmm. Process adversity creates monsters, right? Yeah. And we were able to bring home, and it was super special. We were able to bring home a first a trophy placing this last last month, and it was super special because our kids saw that their process created good results, mm. right? And so that's what I do, you know, is is as 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 a leader, as a developer, as a however you want to put it, coach, head coach, whatever. Um, that's not my status, yeah. right? That's just right. that's just that's the, the 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 name on the title. But you know, I take every single one of my positions that God has entrusted me in very seriously, and uh, and I pray that I leave the place a little bit better than when I got there. I like it, right? And so I put a tweet out the other day. It's like it's like nobody's too big to clean the mats. That's right? all right. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? You're it's right. just like I I that's something. When I let somebody else clean the mats, whoo, it's just frustrating because I'm like, I'm like you're not doing it right. But at the same time, it's like, like cleaning the mats is is important. Yeah, right. It's probably sure. one of the most important things as a wrestling coach to do. Yeah, but nobody ever wants to do it. Mm. Um, and so, you know, it's it's leadership has taught th- these positions have taught me so much. You know, and that's that's a huge defining moment in my life is just allowing myself to be used by God. Mm. Every day is a defining moment for me. I love it. Because if I don't take every moment as what God has entrusted me in, then I'm missing out on something that God has me yeah. uh, to do that day. Right? I like it. So, I like it. So, What would you ask yourself if you were sitting in my chair? Man, uh, are you enjoying the journey? Mm. Are, are you, you enjoying the journey? Man, I love it. Good. Every day I wake up and I'm so motivated to to be a better husband, be a better dad, be a better coach. Um, I'm always learning. And I always told myself, if I ever stop learning, then I'm retiring from what I'm doing. There you go, man. And so I think as coaches and as dads, we get to a point where we stop learning from other people. Mm. And... Um, <laughs> And it's so important for us to constantly be learning. So I read. I read. I, I'm a, I'm dyslexic. I hate reading. It's the worst thing for me. And it takes everything out of me to read. Yeah. But I, I have to spend some time reading. Sure. Because that allows me to learn. Yeah. It allows me to study. You know, um, and, and, and never being content with where I'm at. Mm. Always looking to, to adjust. Always mm-hmm. being a little bit better every day. Yeah. You know, um, I was talking to athletes yesterday just about never being satisfied with where we're at because if we're ever satisfied, we become complacent. Yeah. And in my sport, like, if you become complacent, somebody's catching up to you. Yeah. There's, a, there's a coach that says, uh, uh, if you ever think that you are not being hunted all the time, then that person that is training harder than you or is, is hunting you is eventually going to catch up to you and he's going to beat you. Yeah. And I was like, man, that's such a true statement. It's like, it's like, am I the hunter or am I the hunty? Yeah. Right. You don't understand. Am I the prey? Right. Yeah. Am I the person hanging back and, and looking, waiting for other people to do stuff? It's like, no, I'm, I want to be that hunter. I always want to be that hunter. Right. I always want to be trying to grow. I always want to be developing. I always want to be better. Yeah. Than the day before, I like and it. The, and 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 with that being said, a lot of the time when I'm in a leadership position and, I, and you know you get through things and a week after season you're like, man, I don't even want to think about wrestling or <laughs> I don't even want to think about coaching baseball or I don't even want to think about you know uh, this trip that we just went on, you know, 
But I spend a lot of that time digesting mm-hmm. and seeing what things worked, For what sure. things we got to work on. Yeah. Right. I'm my own worst critic. Yeah. Uh, I learn a lot from myself. So you, you should be. Um, it, it is a it is a very um, it's a very good place to be in. Yeah. I I really enjoy where I'm at right now. I love it. What are you most proud of? Oh, um, probably that's a probably the the thing I'm most proud of is uh, is my relationship with my wife, and that is uh, because we've worked so hard, we've worked so hard together, um, and uh, we uh, we're able to see lights come on in our kids' eyes every single morning. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I, I've, I've trained pretty hard to win a state title. I've trained pretty hard to win a national title, but <laughs> marriage is tough. Mm. Right. And, yeah. uh, that's probably my most pr- proud moment, uh, to be able to look my wife in the eyes every single night and know that I've done everything I can to love her and, uh, to show her the utmost respect every single day. That's powerful, man. So. If you could describe your wife in three words, which three words would you use? Uh, she's very passionate. She's loving. Uh, and she is a prayer warrior. I know that's two words, but, man, she is yeah. a warrior. She is a warrior, man. She is a battler. Um, and uh, she she's my backbone, man. She's she's my rock. Um, that's awesome. And uh, right before I came here, she just gave me a big old hug. She goes, I'm so proud of you. That's great. And uh, that just, that means the world to me. Because, yeah. um, you know, hearing your dad say that, that's one thing. But hearing your wife say that, it's, it's a very powerful thing. So, yeah. anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's 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 crazy the journey that I've been on. I told I tell myself, you know, one time in my life I'm going to write a book. Yeah. I'm going to write a book, you know, because <laughs> if it's not one thing, it's another thing. And, yeah. and from, from. My relationship with my wife, to my kids, to Colton, to um, my team, to to the, what I do for a living, and I there's so many things that are going on that God has entrusted in me, mm. and so managing those is is important. But yeah. the first thing I have to manage is me, yeah. who I am, I like right, it. and know who I am, yeah. because there's I, there's not a, a a leader out there. That doesn't understand who they are. Right. There's not. Sure. There's not a good leader. You cannot be a good, effective leader and not know who you are. Yeah. And th- for the longest time in my life, I tried to be somebody that I wasn't. Mm. And I spent a lot of time trying to be somebody I wasn't because yeah. I didn't know who I was. Yeah. And uh, once I figured out who I was, <laughs> bro, <laughs> I, I, that monster. Yeah. Is is alive and well, and. Uh, I have to tame that monster yeah. some days because um, because God has, he's like, I want you to talk to this person. I want you to talk to that person. And, yeah. You know, I'm praying through a situation and uh, and, and I, I want to talk to this guy. And, I, and, and and God's like, wait, yeah, wait, just wait. The opportunity is going to open up and I'm just going to sit back and I'm going to wait. And it's going to be super fun, man. Yeah. And uh, the people that I get it influence on a daily basis and be around on a daily basis, um, is is so so beautiful and i just yeah. get to sit back and get to be part of it and, you I know this it. it's a journey man it's it's a battle yeah. but it's a journey so. i like it yeah. before we close this up last question for you coach how does coach colby robinson want to be remembered mm. um i want to be remembered as a useful tool of god mm-hmm. I I uh, I always say this. Um, I always want to stand in front of my Lord and Savior one day, and and to be well done, good and faithful servant. Ooh. And uh, and so every day, that's that's what that's what drives me. That's what drives me every single day, is how how am I serving? How am I how am I leading well? Mm. Um, and uh, I have a picture in my classroom of Jesus washing this businessman's feet. And uh, on the bottom of it, it just says servant. Are you going to be a servant today? Don't ever think that you've arrived. Don't ever think that you have accomplished these things. Right. Have you served well? Right? And uh, so when I stand in front of my Lord and Savior, that's all I want. I just want him to say, well done. Well done, my friend. That's great. And uh, 
And if I get that, then man, I've lived an successful successful life. Yeah. You know, our earthly earthly fame fades away. But if uh, my Lord and Savior is not um, is is not you know there for me, you know, I just, I'm without it. You know, it's like I I missed it. I don't want him to get there and go, well, you should have done all this stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. And so, um, well done, good and faithful servant. I That's like all it. I want. I love so, it. Anyway. How do our listeners and followers get in touch with you? So um, I'm on Twitter, Coach Robinson underscore OCS uh, WR. You can catch me on there. Um, I do a little bit snippets and of my program and quotes that I get. Um, I, I love Twitter and how – how we're able to kind of share a little bit of our mm-hmm. life journey on there. I'm also on Instagram, uh, J. Colby Robinson, uh, and then I also have Facebook too. Yeah. So I, I share out where I'm at on, yeah. on social media. Yeah. And Coach, I, I appreciate all your wisdom, great words, and I really love your energy. Thank you. And your passion. Thank so. you. It's, 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 uh, it's a light inside me, and I'm excited to be able to share just a little bit with you. I was yeah. so so pumped for this day and <laughs> be able to kind of share a little insight. It's kind of crazy how we haven't really like had a friendship for a long time, yeah. but how many people that are in our lives that like we very ha- we have a lot of mutual friends, yeah. right? And yeah. It's like, oh, you're talking to this dude. That's my <laughs> man. That's my boy. You know. And so I see things like yeah. that. I'm like, man, this this. This is ordained for sure by God that yeah. that we've been, been able to grow in this friendship and have Absolutely. coffee together and do yeah. all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. No, I appreciate so, it, Coach. I really appreciate best. it. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Yeah. For more Defining Moments podcast content, visit our webpage, www.undefeated.show. Follow us at Def Moments Pod on Twitter and at Defining Moments Podcast on Instagram.